Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before. My dad was born in London.
One, two, three, four. Okay, and then this one. Okay, one, two, nice. Is it on the system? This mark is through the system.
When all foundations have been shaken When I'm left standing in the dark And all I feel is my heart breaking You still reign and you're still God And when it feels all hope is fading hit so hard And though my soul may feel forsaken You still reign and you're still God Though I can't see what's before me I know that I can trust your heart truth will be my story you still reign and you're still God I will declare that you are with me though voices whisper that you're not you'll never leave me nor forsake me cause you Trust the victory of your cross And fix my eyes upon you, Jesus For you are God and I am not You are good and you are faithful As you have been from the start I'm the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall not die eternally. Please will you be seated. And we're going to join together with the song, How Great Thou Art. We encourage you to sing behind your masks as we worship God together this morning. Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder 
We welcome you today to the celebration of Kenneth John Akers' life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, whose love is everlasting, help us now to turn to you with reverent and submissive hearts, that through the steadfastness and encouragement that the scriptures bring, we may have hope and be lifted above our distress into the light and peace of your presence. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Maria, would you please light the candle for us? We light this candle in remembrance of Ken. We also light this candle as a symbol of God's presence with us today. Michelle, would you like to come and say your few words for us, please? Firstly, I would like to welcome friends and family here today that have joined us via the live stream, especially my sister Susan and her family joining us from Atlanta, USA. I truly wish you were here with us. It is so difficult to sum up 84 years of life in five minutes as Dad lived such a colorful and full life. What a time to have lived through to have seen how our modern day lives evolved over the past 84 years. Kenneth John A. Kirst, born 18 May 1937 in London, England. He spent his youth growing up in Luton. As a very young boy during World War II, his mother Louise, his oldest brother Ron, and his father George often had to evacuate to the bomb shelter at the end of their road. His mother, Louise, was a volunteer during the war, assisting to build tanks at Vauxhall Motors, which is where Dad later served his mechanical engineering apprenticeship. From 1959 to 1961, he did two years national service in the UK Air Force. This was mandatory from the age of 18. In 1959, Dad married my mother, Jane, my oldest sister, Susan, was born in 1963 on Dad's birthday. He always said that she was the most expensive birthday present he ever had. I followed in 1966. My sister and I had a lovely childhood and never wanted for anything. We had some wonderful family holidays together, and Dad was a fantastic provider. Dad was quite the disciplinarian in our household and I remember how my sister and I respected his rules. One day, Sue and I had done something wrong, and it was not unusual for Dad to bring out the slipper for a good spanking. It was legal in those days. In a fit of anger, he sent Sue and I scrambling off to our room, where we fearfully awaited our impending punishment. Dad then called out to us, are you ready? And we fearfully replied, yes, Daddy. He then said, good, you can get up and go now. The psychological trauma was worse than the smack would have been itself. Another memory of Dad's discipline was when my sister did not want to eat her mashed potato, and Dad threatened to rub it in her hair. Needless to say, it was then that my sister discovered the magical hair conditioning powers of mashed potato. When my dad spoke, you listened. I'm pleased to say that Dad definitely mellowed in his latter years. My dad was always a bit of a wanderlust, and in 1968, as a young family, we moved to Nigeria, where he was general manager of a motoring company. Our stay of two years was cut short when my sister developed chronic asthma, resulting us having to return to England. Still not quite settled, dad decided to relocate us to South Africa in 1972, where he headed up an engineering company called Brockhaus. Dad had a very successful career spanning over many years, heading up engineering operations 
as well-known companies such as Henry Fruhoff, Doorbell Engineering, Murray and Roberts. He also spent a short time working at BMW in Roslyn, where he enjoyed the perks of two company and BMWs. We thought we were the bee's knees. Dad was an avid golfer with many weekends spent on the golf course and, of course, on the 19th hole. He was a proud member of the Nomads Golf Fraternity. Dad also loved the water. Not only did he own a ski boat, but he also loved water skiing. In the later years, he then bought a sailing yacht and spent many weekends at the Val Dam sailing and caravanning. He loved the time he spent at our house at the Val River. Dad was very proud and happy when Sue and I met our respective husbands, Glenn and Dave. Dad approved of our choices. He was a very proud father when walking us down the aisle and giving us away. Dad was blessed to have three grandchildren, Gabrielle, Kevin, and Sarah, and then more recently, the birth of his great-granddaughter, Raya, who unfortunately he never got to meet. Sadly, my mom and dad divorced, and Dad met his second wife, Sharon, who had a young daughter named Storm. They relocated to England in 1998, and Dad played a pivotal role in the upbringing of Storm, and they have remained in close contact ever since. Dad and Sharon also divorced, and then Dad moved back to South Africa in 2007, where he took up the caretaker position at our then estate at the Val River. It is during this time that Dad met Maria. They had a whirlwind romance and married in 2009. They always say third time lucky, and lucky he was. Maria has cared for Dad ever since. On Dad's passing, Dad and Maria had been married for 12 years. Dad was soon adopted into Maria's family and was blessed to have not only Maria's children, but her grandchildren around him. Dad was fondly known as Opa. I'm honest to admit that my dad and I sometimes did not see eye to eye. I think in hindsight, my dad and I were so similar and hence our moments when we clashed. However, despite these moments, he was always truly loved and we always found our way back to each other. The father-daughter bond is one that could never be broken despite our many rocky roads and ups and downs. I never stopped loving Dad and never will. I always remember you and we will see each other one day. Rest in peace, Daddy. We're now going to have a video message from Susan. Thank you, Elvis. My dad was born in London. Good morning. My dad. My dad was born in London. Um, he was a tough, hard-working, smart, cocky. Um, I don't think he even finished high school. But he worked hard all his life and became successful. His early life was pretty rough. It was very hard. His own dad took his own life and my dad was raised by his mom. In later years, he brought his mom to South Africa to live because he didn't want her to be alone in her old age. He really loved his mom. And in fact, I know that more recently, he'd been telling me how much he missed his mom. My dad was a complex man and he was definitely no saint. I remember in the, um, the late 70s, our whole family went to church together and my dad and my mom both surrendered their lives to God. And for a while, my dad was a different man. He was a kinder, gentler man. He was excited about God. And then one day he wasn't anymore. I think because of his difficult childhood and what he'd had been through, that he had this void in his life that he just couldn't fill. He craved love and attention. And unfortunately, he looked for it outside of his marriage with my mom. And so effectively, our family was broken in 1992. There were a few years of silence between us. 
but gradually we started talking to each other. And I even went to visit him and stay with him and his wife in England for a while. I remember another visit, this time to South Africa, in I think it was 2008. And I was sitting with my family at Michelle and David's dinner table. And there was my dad and my mom and my mom's husband, Brian. And I remember just marveling at the healing God had performed in my family, that we could all just be sitting there together. It was good. Living so far away in the United States made family visits few and far between. Life gets in the way. Raising kids, jobs, even a move to California, which added another three hours onto the already six hour time zone difference. Dad and Maria visited us soon after they got married and we had a lovely time with them, getting to know each other again. And I visited SA a few times, getting to stay with them. Most wonderful of all, my dad rediscovered his faith in God. Suddenly I was having conversations with him that I never believed I could have. Conversations about God, about the Bible, about prayer. I just want to say thank you to Maria for reintroducing my dad to his faith. My dad, stubborn, tenacious, hardworking, a tongue that could wound so easily. But he was also an adventurer. He loved the thought of adventure. That's why we moved to Nigeria and then to South Africa. And he was a dreamer. My dad had lots of dreams about what he wanted to do, where he wanted to go. I think he even dreamed of writing a book one day. And he could be kind and generous. As he got older, family became more and more important to him. And I know that Maria's family, in many ways, became his family as well. I believe my dad loved us, Michelle and I. As imperfect as that love was, he truly loved us. And I, as imperfect as my love is, I truly love my dad. I'm grateful that he was my dad. I'll miss hearing his voice at the end of the telephone. But I just want to say I love you, Dad. And I know I will see you again one day. And I'm glad you're at peace now. Um, Stephanie is going to say a few words on behalf of Maria. Bear with me. I'm. I don't know what to say. I'm very <laughs> near tears. So yes, let's try. Maria, to Gen, my dearest beloved Gen, you fought so many battles. You were so strong, my love. I saw your pain and suffering that broke my heart in pieces. I was so powerless. All I could do was to fight the doctors and hospitals to see you get the best treatment. So you went through so much of your chemo, the absolute tiredness at the end of, of a whole day of chemo. I thank the Lord that I could teach you to love and trust God. And I thank the Lord that he welcomed you with open arms at heaven's door. To live in the hearts we leave behind is not to die. Special people, you, my love, was one. That's why I loved you so much. You scattered seed of kindness and love wherever you go. Generous and caring, thoughtful and always helpful. You was always concerned with my needs and other around you. You never think of yourself. Seldom see the beauty of your small acts of kindness bring out in others. If ever I look back, I can see a beautiful field of wild flowers that spring up as scattered sheets of caring along life's way. Thank you for the wonderful, unforgettable 12 years of marriage. I'm a your favorite words. I love you so much. 
and look at me with your beautiful blue eyes ten times a day. That was all, that was also the last I heard you say. You will be missed for all your children and grandchildren. The kiddies love you so much and lose and help you out of the car every time. Now we all love you dearly forever and ever. You look so peaceful when I saw you the very last time. Rest in peace, my love, till we meet again. Your life was a blessing, your memory a treasure. You are loved beyond words and missed behind measure. Your loving wife, Maria. Must I do the, the, the special page? Must I do the special page? Not now. Okay. And then Dudley, I think, is going to have a few words. Hi. Um, Twelve years ago, met a man and uh, I haven't written this down but this is from my heart he saw what I did he sat there in his car and he watched me and about six months later he came to me and he says you can do something um, and he helped me um, and I must say, it was unconditional. Um, he didn't put conditions on it. He got me what I needed, and he said, go on, I'll see you a bit later. And um, we made it. And the main thing we want to know is to confirm what everybody says is we know where he are, where he is now. Um, you know, one day, it was on a Sunday, and I tell the story over and over. He phoned me, we stayed in the house next door to them, and... Um, he phoned me and says, Dudley, tonight, 12 o'clock, the receiver of revenue is taking off 15,000 rand. I said, Ken, I prayed. He said, how can that help? I said, just, just be patient. And within two hours, I got an SMS of a client, made a direct payment of 70,000 rand. And I found him, and he was quiet. And a year later, now this, the receiver took their money, funny enough, every once a month, they had a debit order on an account on Sundays. And one day I found him frantically. I said, Ken, there's no money. He said, did you pray? I said, of course I did pray. He said, keep calm. It will be there. Two hours later, I found him again. I said, it's in. He said, I wasn't worried. I also prayed. So, I know where, we, where he is now. And if we can all keep it together, we will meet him again and I've no doubt in my heart where he is they spend a lot of time praying we prayed 
together a lot. And he was always happy to pray. And in no particular order, I'm just going to thank. We had a rough few years. And this is in no particular order. But Michelle, you and Dave, you did something incredible for your father. This last two weeks, I know it wasn't easy. And um, you put your personal griefs aside and you got stuck to what you need to do. Dave stood by your side. And I think this is a wonderful free will. Well, we, could, we couldn't have dreamt this would have been so nice and beautiful. I thank you so much out of my heart. And here he is, not, not the empty casket, he is here. And we haven't said goodbye. And this is the only way to say decently goodbye, in honor of him. And I, and I thank you out of the bottom of my heart, and I cheer everybody, Sue, Glenn, Storm, everybody. Yvette and Andy, Anka and Adele, we, we thank you truly that we can all greet him. And as friends, that's all, yeah. He wasn't so stubborn at the end. He wasn't so stubborn when I met him. He just tried to lead me. And when he writes a, 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 a letter, I don't want to be on the other side of that letter. Um, as you do the same, Sue, <laughs> that you got from him. Um, and then Andy and Evert, I just want to thank you for what you did to the, for them in a very difficult time. A house, a roof over the head, and a car, and just the basic things, I appreciate it. He, he, he was also overwhelmed with that. And then also Sue, always helping. Uh, when there was needed, she filled the gaps. And, uh, yeah, what a great man. And, uh, we're going to miss you dearly as, as a friend, as a partner, and as a father, and a husband, mother, and mother, last of all. But you were always concerned, always fighting for him. And it wasn't always difficult, uh, easy for him because he was frustrated. He was, he was the pain and his back and the fact that he struggled to walk. Um, it, it wasn't easy for him to live that life. But it's just sad that, that you had to bring it to the end. We, we only could be here together in this situation. But we dearly love you again and will still and always will and your memory will stay with us for the rest of your life and the influence, bad or good, they all had a purpose in everybody's life. So with that Sue and Glenn um, Michelle and Dave, Yvette and Andy, Ma, Dal, you and he spoke a lot. He was always concerned about you. And um, he loved people, he just loved it. And I will miss him dearly, and we have to say goodbye. So goodbye, my friend. We truly love you. Thanks.
Thank you, Daphne. Michelle and I think Stephanie as well. Okay. I would just like to read out some messages that uh, friends and family have sent through. Um, the first message is from Evert, Andy, Lucian, Riley, and Emily. We feel extremely grateful that we were blessed enough to have you a part of our lives for the time that we did. You were always there for Lucian, Emily, and Riley's events, no matter how ill or tired you felt. You loved and welcomed our kiddies into your heart so openly and immediately had a very special bond with Lucian. We loved hearing your stories about the life you led. It was always so interesting to hear about all the experiences you had. We will miss your corny jokes and quirky jokes. Uh, sorry, quirky remarks at the get-togethers. There is really a big empty space in our lives now that cannot be filled, but it is comforting to know that you are in paradise with our Heavenly Father, happy and healthy. Thank you. We have a message from Storm, who um, was a stepdaughter to Dad, and they lived in the UK. Storm's message. Dear Dad, it is so hard to condense everything that I want to say. You are the strongest, most courageous person I have ever known. Never one to shy away from a challenge and always so hardworking. Thank you for being such an amazing role model and showing me such a shining example how a loving, caring father should be. Thank you also for everything that you have done for me. You have taught me so much, even as a teenager when you thought I wasn't listening. And I would never be where I am today without you in my life. I will love you forever and always and thank my lucky stars that I had you in my life. I will miss your quick wit and kind words most of all and how, oh, I would love to have one last great big bear hug. Your grandchildren know how amazing you are, and I wish that you could have met them. One day, when I get married, please be there by my side, walking me down the aisle as we had planned. You are and always will be my hero. I love you so much, Dad. I know you are at peace now, and please sleep tight until we meet again. All my love, Storm. Thank you very much, Storm. We have a message from Anka. Dear Opa Ken, even though we were not related through blood, we were family through heart. Opa will always be remembered as a kind and caring person who was always interested in the little things I had to say. Opa lived a full and good life with family and friends that loved him very much and cared deeply. Opa Ken was a loving friend, father, husband, grandpa, and so much more to so many other people. Opa will, all, will forever be in our hearts and never be forgotten. We love you, Opa, and we will see you soon with all our hearts. Thank you, Anka. A message from Adele. Dear Ken, I'm going to miss the chats we had so much. You always had a positive outlook on life. You were a big inspiration to me with so much wisdom. I know you are happy and at peace where you are. Till we meet again, I love you and will always remember you. Love, Adele. We also have a message from Stefani. The Bible says in Psalm 90 that you are blessed if you reach 70 and by reason of strength, 80 years. What a blessed life you had to reach 84 years. Ken, I will miss you. You always had time to listen to people. You always thanked for Mar Maria for her loving care. If I will miss you that much, how much more will Maria miss you? She loved you, she looked after you, and cared about you every second. You will also be missed by your children and grandchildren. Your last wish was to see the sea one more time, which our loving Father gave to you. Ken, we thank God for your life, and we will miss you dearly, and you will forever be in our hearts. Love, Stefani. And then I have um, two messages just from uh, friends. Um, okay, I'm going to ask um, 
Dudley, if you can read this one in a moment, because it's in Afrikaans, and I think it might be better coming from you. Um, uh, we have a message from Mickey Erasmus in Bloemfontein. Time to say goodbye. Our deepest sympathy. When someone gets lost, you can't find that one. But when someone dies, you know always where to find that one. We are so sad for your loss, Maria. Just have faith in God. He will show you the way forward. When I met Ken for the first time seven years ago, I could see the love in his eyes for you. You were his sweetheart, and I watched the two of you over the years, and I could see how you loved and cared for him and fought for him so much. You had happy and sad times, great and fun times. You were both blessed. During Ken's illness, the two of you still had a very strong love for each other. It touches my heart, and I want to thank you too for opening my eyes and made me believe that real love still exists. Rest in peace, dearest Ken, from Mickey. All right, I'm actually going to attempt the Afrikaans. <laughs> uh, this is from Dok Jan and Marita van Beek. Lieve Maria, Dudley and Adele, Irvit and Andy, klein kinders and families, Woorde is leeg as mens hart seer en stikkend is. Weet asseblief dat ons so graas persoonlik by jylle wou wees en in jyl oor, oor wou kyk om te sê, Maria en almal kostbaar. Dis ook jylle eine gaan beer te woord, sissie, jy gaan koop. Jesus gaan jou dra. Jesus het vir jou en ken 12 jaar gegeer waar jylle mekaar gekoeste lief gehad het en vertroos het. Ken is nou op een plek waar ons allemaal graag wil wees, waar hy sonder trome en pijn in sy stukkende leifie is, waar hy nou is in die hemel en is hy heel met geen pijn en geen verdere trome. Ons allemaal wil vir jou dankie sê vir alles wat jy vir hom, hom gedoen, het, uh, gedoen en beteken het en ook dat jy vir hom 24-7 daar was. Dankie dat jy vir hom lief was met jou hele hart. As mens kan mens net soveel gee en jy het jou alles gegee. Ek sien nog hoe die ontbijte en sy pille, vitamines, vruchte sap, thee en water gereed staan as hy opstaan. Die beste en lekkerste was as jy, as hy ons klompkere gebel het, as ons vinnige hoelies toegerei het, en dan nog ons heerlik stoep, kuiris en chats, toe hy nog gezond was, saam jou kinders, kin, kids. Ek en Dokkie groet jou uit JB, en weet dat Jezus jou hande omhoog sal hou, so dat jy die nodige kracht sal hee, om jou levenspad te te stap saam die mensies wat jou, vir jou baie lief is. Baie liefder, jammer dat ons nie daar die seer was, sorry, jammer dat ons nie daar die seer wat ons ook ken kan wegvat nie. Ons maak jou toe in wat, watte. Weet dat ons vir jou kan en sal bied en dat ons daar sal probeer wees. Sulke tye hou ek niks van COVID en afstande nie. Ons lief jou van Dok, Dok Jan en Marita van Beek. Baie dankie. Thank you very much. Um, Michelle? Ek kan nie die muziek. Ja, dan het... Vraag Maria Rout, my special thanks to special people in our lives. Firstly, our Heavenly Father for the gift of Ken's life and our wonderful time together. Michelle, I can't thank you enough for all the hard work and your love you put in with the arrangements for Dad's funeral. You made him proud. Also for all the patience you had with me. Sue, Glenn, Michelle and Dave, 
Thank you for giving him a beautiful goodbye. Also for the support and love during the years. You will never know how much you really appreciated it and so much needed. Gabby, Gabby and Ken, Granddad really loves you so very much. Evert and Andy, for the roof of our, our heads, car, food, love, and so much care. Edward's the little kiddies, Lucian and Sarah, was his little angels. Andy, you and me had so much fun looking for all that specials, running around from shop to shop. Daddy and Adele and Anke, you made a plan to give him his greatest wish, to see the sea one more time. I can't thank you enough for that. He enjoyed every moment so much. Daddy, for always looking to see if we were okay. And Adele, he prayed for your healing. Sissy and Sissa, for always bring us such nice treats and goodies from all your trips. How much you were there for me the last few days. Mara, for all your help, thank you. Then I want to thank Dr. Fenter, his specialist. He always put him through, pulled him through. But if God calls you home, there is nothing no one can do anymore to our family. God gave us each other for a reason. He can always forgive. He loved you so much with all his heart. I love you. Let's celebrate his love. His life. Rest in peace, my love. Thank you. We're now going to have some picture reminders and a lovely song on the PowerPoint. Thank you, Alice. <laughs>
thank you everybody for such beautiful words, such wonderful memories and such lovely pictures too. Let us pray. Ons is hier te saam vergader op hierdie eerbied, eerbiddige oomlik om ken in die hand van God ons Himmelse Vader te oorhandig. Met die oorgang van die tydelike aardse bestaan na die eeuwige Himmelse lewe het Christene die absolute versekering en vaste vertrouwen vir hoop en versekering en selfs vreugde. Want ons God Jesus Christus wat gedeel het in ons aardse en vergankelijke leven en dood, het uit die dood verreis en leef in eeuwigheid. Hy is ons eeuwige bron van een leven wat nummer eindig is in God. Amen. Our first reading today is from Psalm 23. And um, I'm reading one of the more old-fashioned versions because it just feels more like what it should be. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me behind, beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Beautiful words we hear over and over. And yet every time there's something different that just speaks to us. And there's a beautiful picture of the shepherd and the sheep. And the shepherd that looks after the sheep, and I think sometimes it must be quite a boring job, but on other days it gets quite stressful and exciting. And day in and day out, the shepherd will take the sheep to where they need to go. He will take them to find fresh grass. He will take them to find water. He will keep them safe at night. And just like that, God looks after each one of us. He's with us all the time. He takes us to where we need to go. He finds us the food we need, whether it be physical or spiritual. And he finds us the water we need to drink for that thirst that we have for him. He gives us his love and he loves us all the time. And then there's that beautiful image of lying down in the green pastures. Have you ever, with your children, or maybe if we can still remember when we were children, you've rolled down a hill of nice cut green grass, or you've just had a, a lie down on the, on the grass at home, on the lawn, and looked up at the sky and seen the clouds and just been in that moment where it's you on the grass and, and God is right there. That is what he wants for us. He leads us by those still waters as well. So it's almost adding to the picture. We're lying on the green grass and there's a lovely little river running past us. It brings us peace. It's an image that helps us to feel a little bit more peaceful inside. And we know that Ken is now with God. From what everybody has said today, we have no doubt. And like any one of us, our journey with God is not always as straight as an arrow. There are times when we are further from him and times when we are closer. But he has never left Ken. From that first day when they found Jesus, and Ken has always been his child and will always be his child again. We know that Ken is resting now in the peaceful presence of Jesus himself. And then the psalm also tells us that when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which sounds like a scary place, sounds like a place where times are tough and things are hard. And I know the last few years, months, days have been hard. And he's with you right there. There might have been those times when you feel alone. And you think nobody understands or, or you're lonely because your relationship with Ken was different to everybody else's. And you just know that that's gone and that loneliness creeps in. And that's when Jesus comes. And that's when he's with you at the same time. These are the times when we don't have to fear because God is with us. Like the shepherd, he's right here with us even in the darkness. 
He's with us right now. And the invitation to live in God's presence, which is there and has been fulfilled with Ken, is for all of us. Our second reading is from the New Testament, where Jesus is speaking to his disciples to comfort them from John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and also believe in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And then Thomas, the disciple that always doubted Jesus, said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered very clearly, I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Friends, we have reason to hope. And right now, we can't always imagine that. Maybe tomorrow looks like it's far away. But we have reason to hope. Reason to take comfort that we're not alone in this world or the next. Reason to face each day encouraging each other, waiting for that encounter with God himself. I'm sure, friends, that you have a good picture of what Ken's room looks like that God has prepared for him. From what I've gathered, I think there'll be a sea view. I think there will be friends next door. I think there will be family and those he loves just very close by. You see, Jesus knows each one of us so well that he will prepare for us what we need. The good news is we don't have to wait forever to get there. He's preparing it for us now too. God knows Ken. He knows him well. He's his friend. He's his son. And God will be there with him. And friends, Ken will be at home with God now. So as we move on from today, life will be different. There will be those quick phone calls and messages that just don't happen anymore. There will be that, oh, I want to tell, and then we can't. We know that grief comes in many ways. And so I encourage you to think of the memories and translate those memories of love into what will carry you through the next few days. And these memories will bring joy and comfort to everybody. Remember your time spent with Ken. Please don't walk out of here and not talk about him again. Keep him alive for your kids Help them to remember. Tell the stories of what your dad did, what Opa did. Talk about him often. Talk about him with love. Talk about him with the memories that fill your hearts. And laugh about the good times. If you had some good jokes, keep them alive for the next generation. Tell them. Help them to experience who he was. And friends, cry when you need to cry. That's okay. Grief comes in its own way. And today we gather, and it's a sad day, but we're grateful that we can celebrate that Ken has been part of your lives. We, we only cry and really miss those that we've loved. And I know that there are so many, and those watching as well who can't be here, we know that your memories are as fresh, and we ask that you just keep those alive all over the world for him and for each person here. Celebrate the relationship that you had with Ken. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for Ken, for his life and all that we experienced with him and through him. We ask that you keep these memories we have of him safe in our hearts. Eternal God, in your wisdom and grace, you've given us, through, you've given us joy through the lives of your departed servants. We thank you for them and for our memories of them. We pray you, praise you for goodness and mercy that followed Ken all the days of his life and that follows us too. And Lord, we thank you for his faithfulness to the tasks which you called him to. We thank you, Lord, that for Ken the tribulations of this world are over and death is past. And we pray that you will bring us with them to the joy of your perfect kingdom. Father of all, we pray for those whom we love but we see no longer. Grant them your peace 
Let light perpetual shine upon them in your loving wisdom and almighty power. Work in them the good purpose of your perfect will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, I hope you remember today as a good day, a day of good memories, as well as the sadness that is in our hearts. Michelle, I ask that you will blow out the candle, not that the memories will go away, or that God will leave us. And we ask the pallbearers and those that are going to be taking the coffin for us to please come forward. And Elvis, would you play the next song? I'm